your guy. And um, that's kind of uh, how, uh, what happens when you don't communicate. Um, and uh, yeah, and but but it, they also they're also really big and big liars. And uh, I mean, I don't want to like just talk trash about Chileans, but I so I think the reason and the remedy for why they lie and how they could not could, could stop lying is, I think a lot of times they feel like they have to lie um, because there's just so many rules. You just just easiest way to get around it is just to lie. But then they take it way too far and they start lying about everything. Um, I had, uh, like my wife, what kind of lies did she tell me? She told me when she broke up with me that her daughter, um, well actually I don't want to talk about that. Um, there's some stuff I can't talk about. Um, one of them is when she went to Spain her mother uh, was homesick and she was there for a month and she was going to stay there but her mother told her she was dying of lung cancer and had a month to live, had six months to live. So she had to come back to say her farewell so then she moved back and then she was like, oh yeah, that, I was just, I just said that, whatever. She just said it so she'd come back. Stuff like that. Um, there's this other guy, I won't say who he is, but uh, Chilean, was saying um, that uh, Talk, telling me about like this mini, his friend had an Austin mini, and he'd go to the mini races, and uh, every time he, he revs it up, it the whole front comes up and it goes like this, and all down the road, and then it comes down, and he wins 1,500 bucks every single weekend. And But the kid lived with his dad, who was a bike repair mechanic in the ghetto, who lived on like a dollar a day or something. He had like dirt floors in their house. So he didn't make that much money, and the minis wouldn't start like that because they're front-wheel drive. Anyways, I've got a whole bunch of uh, stories like that. But, uh, yeah, just telling stories. <laughs> just telling stories. Um, but the big thing is, um, um, I guess, the communication. They just can't, um, they can't communicate and when they do, they have to do it like in an angry way, um, like they're blowing their top or something. And uh, and um, and the classism, poor people don't have any opinions, and it's like they don't allow like allowed to have opinions. They just believe it's like oh yeah, the rules are that, and we just follow the rules and whatever. But at the same time, they don't like the rich people, and they don't trust the rich people. So if you if you don't like the rich people or trust the rich people who, and the lawyers who make all the rules that support all the rich people, then why do you just like go along with the rules for everything and follow them? Um, one example is like I guess cars, bikes. If you're on a bike, that must mean you're poor because I, I never saw any rich people like riding bikes around. Some I guess bike racer people, they probably don't ride their bikes around. Um, that like means you're poor. And bikes don't have any respect, and it's weird because they should, because that place is really polluted. Every time I'd ride my bike to a class and come back, I'd have to change out the shirt after every single time because every single time the inside of the collar would be totally black. And I wish I'd, I should have worn a mask at the time. The whole time I was there, I'd probably be a lot healthier in my lungs. But um, yeah, bikes don't. I got run off the road twice, like people passing me and then just turning in front of me and we ended up both having to completely stop or else they'd run over me twice in one month. Once um, we were stopped in a, in a light and, and, and some busy road and all the cars were already stopped and then I, I was like this guy was parked way too, it's on, it's on a two lane road with a median and I couldn't pass him to get to the front of the red light on the on his left side because he was way next to the curb so I went around and then I came in front of him and when I did that he honked at me and I looked at him and then and then I rode past and then he I guess at the next light he came up and he like yelled at me and I think he yelled at me because I rode in front of him and he thought that was disrespectful of me to like ride in front of his car even though he wasn't even moving at all and 
I came down, and I was like, dude, what's your problem? And there's some English dude in the car with him, and he's like, dude, you shouldn't, like, ride in a road. I was like, I shouldn't ride in a road. There's a road down there with a bike path. That guy, English dude, I don't know what his problem was. I guess he was just trying to be as kissing the dude's ass. But another time, I was riding down the road, and... It wasn't even, it was like a really busy road, but it was a small road. It was down Bella Vista. And uh, I'm riding down the road behind a car in the middle of the lane. And then I hear the car behind me honk. So I turn around and it's this old dude with his wife and like a pretty, like, you know, like a late model car. And he, he, go, he flips me off and then he tells me to like get out of the road. I guess he was pissed off that I was in the middle of the road. But I, I, I kind of did this, like, what? And then I looked forward, and then pretty much immediately after that, I passed, like, 20 cars in front of me. Um, I was in the middle of the road because I was going faster than the cars. It was, like, traffic jam. But he thought that that was, like, disrespectful of me to be in the middle of the road. Um, once a car flipped me off because I ran a red light, but it was one of those red lights on a T road, where the light's only there for the cars, not for the pedestrians or the bikes. Another time, this lady passed me on this road that was, like, not crowded at all. And she was so close that she knocked her window, her rearview mirror in, and her, the per passenger had to push it out again. And so she stopped at the next light, and I went to, say, ask her, like, to, like, like, be like, what? And... Before I said anything, I wasn't angry. Before she said anything, she starts yelling at me and then rolls the window up. So, yeah, they don't like bikers. And I think that's because they're seen as poor people and poor people are seen as less. And that is kind of the attitude that I, that's, that's what tweaked me. That's what this whole video is about, that poor people, you feel like you're worth less as a person. And you have, so therefore, not only do you make less money, and they make a ridiculously small amount of money, I think it's like 60 to 1, like, you know, like the maid would make like 60, or a mechanic or somebody would make like 60 times less than their boss. And this rich woman who I was doing the classes for, uh, she had two full-time maids. She was a single mother because her husband died, and she had like four kids, I think. But she had, her house wasn't that big, and she had two people who were there all day every day helping her take care. So it was like slavery. Um, and every, every every one of these rich, her sister had the same thing, the full-time maid. And her sister, one day I was doing a class with her kid, and the kid was really friendly. He was like 11 or something, and, or 13 or something, asking, being intelligent too, asking me questions. But she was screaming at these, like, gardeners or something for, like, the entire class, for, like, 45 minutes, screaming at the top of her lungs, like, literally like insulting them and being the biggest bitch. But they didn't do anything. They were just there like watching her. And that is degrading. Um, maybe they were trying to rip her off or something, but um, maybe that's true because that is something that happens. Uh, my brother, like for example, my wife's brother owned a jewelry manufacturing business and had like five guys working for him or something. And they were always stealing gold from him. But, um, but um, yeah, Thomas Jefferson said uh, that of slavery, that uh, slavery is a bad thing because it's, it's not just bad for the slaves by making them um, give up their dignity and have to give up their freedoms and do whatever the boss tells them to and have to grovel and beg and be perfect manners to them and uh, call them master and everything and, and be yet at the same time be so much poorer it's like adding insult to injury they're so much poorer and owe so much less and work so much harder but they have to get like you know abused but it's also bad for the uh, Thomas Jefferson said it's also bad for the rich people because it gives them bad um, manners by training by getting in the habit of yelling at people and um, for like showing up a minute late or um, having temper tantrums and then they teach their kids how to do that and then the kids grow up to 
to um, be rude assholes and um, and it's reminding me of this like that other little girl the rich lo lo lawyer lady's uh, daughter was 10 and she was this total bitch she was like I'd never seen anything like it I was giving her classes and it was this one thing like earthquakes and like earthquakes um, do damage and she was like I don't know how we got into this but I was like yeah earthquakes she goes earthquakes all earthquakes do damage and I go not all earthquakes do damage she goes yes and then she asked me and she insisted over and over and then but there was this other thing she was asking me something a simple question like is this and I said yes I gave her the answer but then she asked me again but she the way that she asked me she goes is this the answer and I go yes and she goes oh, oh is this the answer and she did it like four times and I finally go yes I'm giving you the answer but yeah she had no respect and I think that's that's just how they treat the poor people no respect and um, I never had a class with her again she tried to give me classes with her other kids but uh, I didn't have the time for it but um, yeah I think um, that's how it that's just how it tweaked me how the how the rich people and the poor people live in completely different worlds and they hate each other poor people hate the rich people because I know that because my wife is always talking trash about them those bad people and her, and her dad he'd get drunk and be like they don't care about anybody but themselves they don't care and uh, I mean they do keep themselves separate like like the clubs like the pools there's this pool on the top of the hill what's it called Virgin Mary Hill it's like 7,000 pesos to get in it's like 20 bucks no pool is that much it's like you know they charge so much because it's in a cool place and they charge so much because I guess and I didn't I never saw it like crowded or anything I guess it's, they just want to keep them separated um, and I guess sociologically the reasons socioeconomically the reasons would be if you marry if some rich person marries a poor person well then the poor person's gonna I guess try to get free shit out of the rich person you know bring them to bring their family over all the time be like oh no he's sick Oh, nobody's there to help him. Oh, you, you have money. You give me your money. And so they'd feel like they're abused, and I'm sure it is like that. Poor people rich, ripping off the rich people. But the rich people are dicks. Like, my wife got a job with this guy who is a owner of some big import business as, as the secretary. And after he hired her, he changed the rules and said, oh, yeah, no, now you have to work the weekends. Um, every other weekend you work the weekends and she's like but that's not what you said when we first started working and he's like well that's how it is now and uh, yeah so she quit him after like a month but it's like they do what they can get away with once she was locked in the bathroom by her boss and he wouldn't let her out until he, she sucked his dick he was this like nasty old 60 year old guy and, and she had to take the bus like an hour each way to work these loud bumpy buses and um, and uh, and then she was like abused by the by the boss. She said how he was like looked down on her, and would like always try to make her feel like she did a bad job. And that's what this lady did, uh, who I did classes with once at this institute. She, I think she got fired because the people didn't like her. But she was like, she she asked me to do a class. And she was always doing this, asking me to make up classes for her at the last minute because she couldn't show up. And when, and I would ride my bike out there. It was like eight miles out of town. And um, she'd pick me up sometimes, but then I'd just stop doing that because every time she'd pick me up in the morning, she'd show up like 10 minutes late, like literally always 10 or 15 minutes late. She could never, ever, ever, ever show up on time, ever. And she'd always call me like, oh, yeah, sorry, hey, I'm late again. Hey. And I think she got fired, but she took all my classes away. And she said it was because, well, the first time she goes, yeah, you can't have classes with that guy anymore because they said you showed up all sweaty. But it, was, but it wasn't my class. It was her class I was taking over that she, um, that she told me that I needed, that she asked me to take over. 
I think it was a half hour before it started. And I had a half hour to get there, but I was eight miles out of town. No, I had 20 minutes to get there. It was like, it started in like 15 or 20 minutes, and I, had, I was eight miles away, and I, and I told her that. And so, and then she accuses me of showing up all sweaty, and so I can't have that class anymore, or she's going to take another class away. <laughs> and uh, she did that in a message, a text message. But, um, but yeah, I think, yeah, instead of, I think what happened is she just got fired and she didn't want to, she just wanted to make it seem like it was my fault. I've experienced stuff like that before, too, because they can't say thank you. That's one thing that they, that they, that it's like against the rules for them to do there is to say thank you. Um, if you feel, if you say thank you there, it's kind of, I, I, um, I have the feeling it's kind of like acknowledging that it's, that you owe them something. So then they can be like, oh, but I gave you that thing that last time. Remember how you said thank you? So now you owe me, gimme, gimme. So then instead of saying thank you, they say vale, which means like, okay. They're, good. they're like, mm, vale. It's like, here, here, I'll give you my, uh, an extra pair of socks, uh, vale. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, and, uh, um, but I think that all that comes from just a lack of abundance and just people, you know, if you don't have enough money, but the rich people have money. So I don't know what their deal is, why they can't, um, they have to grub it so much. Um, and, uh, it's, it's weird. Um, yeah, but they're, it's, they do shit that doesn't make any sense, like, like trying to put each other in boxes. Um, my wife had a tattoo on her arm. It's about right here. And it was, all it was was a heart with her son's name and an arrow going through it. And she was a telemarketer, the kind of person who gives you give people phone calls to do surveys, in a tiny little cubicle, you know, in a whole office building filled with all of them. And she had to dress up perfectly for that. And she had to blotch out her tattoo and make it look like she didn't have a tattoo, even though she didn't deal with anybody there. Um, that's the kind of, man, I could go on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, they're just, they're not really, when you don't communicate, I don't know, they, they don't have, they don't communicate and they, they can't be nice. I had this, when I first got there, when I very, very first got there, I got a job at an institute and um, the institute gave me these books to do classes with, but they didn't have the cassettes. And I asked the guy like three or four times and he never had the cassette. So I had to give the classes of these books w without cassettes, but there was no, uh, but the books were reliant on cassettes. Without the cassettes, you couldn't really do anything with them because it was, that's basically what the book was, was listening to the cassette and then talk about it. But anyways, these ladies, they didn't, they didn't like me and I took over from this other guy. So maybe they like kicked him out too. But they were being these bitches, they were like, basically would refuse to talk to me and um, so then um, they canceled the class but the guy at the Institute never told me so I showed up and the guy the boss guy who I had conversations with classes with and I thought we were cool he comes in and he was like scowls at me like I was like the worst and then like goes in the room and, and then I was like what the hell he didn't say anything, and I asked the lady, the other secretary, was like, oh, yeah, we called and canceled. I was like, oh, well, you know, I didn't hear. And, um, yeah, it's not nice. There's this other lady. I got this job at another institute, and I forgot to bring my book once. and um, But I found out it was the only time in my whole life I'd ever forgotten to do that. But I, I accidentally... I, uh, 
I was about to tell her because I found out right before I got there and I was like, but she goes, oh, your book, and stormed off and then like called the Institute guy and like totally freaked out on him. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I guess I got a little bit sidetracked. Um, sounds like I'm complaining. But uh, like what's the remedy? The remedy, I think, is if you can't, if you got to keep the rich people rich and the poor people poor, and they're like poor people are really poor, I think dignity is something that you should definitely allow the poor people to have and allow them to, you know, if somebody's going to not make any money and be a courier, I don't know, what, what, like a manual laborer, like a construction person, or a telemarketer, or even a maid in a house, you know, or anybody really, even a, even a person who deals with people like a concierge, you know, any of these people who don't make much money, they should be allowed to have tattoos and to grow their hair out and to dye their hair and to have personalities. Because um, it's bad enough that these rich people, I don't know how much they make, the rich people make, and I like to figure it out, but I wouldn't be surprised if like a lawyer there would make more than a lawyer in America, or a certain kind of lawyer. It's probably a whole different kinds of stratifications of lawyers. But um, yeah, just give the people dignity. And I think it got like that, that whole people not trying to, people not trying to communicate with each other. I think it got like that from um, the Catholic Church. I don't think the Catholic Church is as bad as, you know, fundamental as crazy as some other religions, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, but all the rules, they put all these rules on them. The Catholic Church says you're not allowed to use condoms because it's like murder. How they think that, I don't have no idea. That must say that masturbation is evil because that's murder too, because it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, l rules, all these rules. I held a, a cross upside down to my mother-in-law once because I dressed up as a pope on, on one of those guys is for the Halloween. And she freaked. She goes, no, don't do that ever, ever. You're going to curse, curse. That's against Catholic law, no to hold a cross upside down. I was like, whoa, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all those rules. If you have all those rules, then, and it's the Pope who says it, and you can't argue it, then the boss of the company can create all these rules that you can't argue, so then you might as well not argue. And then you just get dumbed down and dumbed down and dumbed down and more numb and more numb until you at the end you're like this and you don't even understand why you would have an opinion about anything and the education there is not good like I asked my wife's brother's girlfriend who was like 19 or something I asked her to draw a map of South America and uh, she didn't know the shape of it she drew like a round like a basically a round thing and I asked her to put um, Santiago, and she put Santiago, she's like, I don't know, put Santiago on the upper right of it. She thought Santiago was where, like, Belen, Brazil is, on the coast of Brazil. And, um, and I was about to ask her another question, and then my wife came in, and she's like, ah, stop it, stop it, don't make fun of her, stop making fun of her. And I was like, oh, I was just... Figuring something out. And then her other friend, my wife's best male friend, Saul, bless his heart, he's, uh, he's really smart, but he's illiterate. He never learned how to read or write. Um, but uh, I, he thought that the Vatican was in America. Uh, he thought the Catholic Church was centered in America. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's because they just don't have any... I mean, look, the rich people who go to the nice private schools, they know all that stuff. They know where the Vatican is. They've traveled all over the world. They've gone on vacation to the Vatican, to Rome. They, they could draw a map of South America. Um, but the poor people, they don't know anything. They're not, they're not educated. Um, they're, 
my friend got a job at a school. I don't know if it, I think it was a, a high-end private school actually, and uh, he said that the education there was bad. Like they were just they weren't told teachers weren't told to do anything. They're just like here, do the books. And then they hired him, and then they paid him less and less each week. And then all the teachers wanted to have a meeting with the lady, but she refused to have a meeting with him. <laughs> to even have a meeting with him, so they all like quit. But uh, that's another story. I've got a, and now I've got a whole bunch of like crazy, 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 crazy like personal stories. But I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to like get. That would involve my girlfriend, my wife's family, and stuff. And, in fact, I already did those videos on other video stories and other videos. I don't know if I should have. It's all in English, though. They can't speak English. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird having it. And I think that's why when I get comments on some of my videos, and it's by people who clearly aren't good at English, and they're clearly not English speakers, and they're not, they're not native English speakers, and they're not even good at English, you know? They're probably from, like, a third world country. Then they get upset with me for expressing my ideas, and then they, they throw in all these other things like, you clearly don't know anything. You, you are, uh, shouldn't even be making videos if you don't. And the, just like empty insults and stuff, I, I kind of feel like I'm back in Chile because I think that's kind of how some of them are, would argue. They're just like, my stance is this, and your stance is that. And, and then they get into this big charade, like throwing in red herrings, and it's like... So, just uh, they have to value communication, you know, and and keep the dignity, dignity alive for the poor people. And poor people's dignity will continue to increase as soon as like more and more poor people can get their hands on computers and internet and educate themselves. Um, but um, I was going to say some other stuff. Ooh, but I've been going for an hour already. Oh my god, I got to turn this off, or it's going to be too big.